So this video is gonna, it's really two sections. Um, so I'll, part C of the video, the first part is understanding an ellipse, graphing it, understanding the parts, labeling it, and things like that. Part D is writing the equation of the ellipse, just kind of like we did with parabolas. Um, so um, I'll tell you when part C ends and when part D begins. So now this first few slides are gonna be part C. In this video, you're going to learn to draw ellipses, okay? You're going to learn to understand the parts of them. And what I want you to kind of notice on, because there's a lot of vocab here, there's a lot of formulas that you're going to learn, and, and in the end, it's just kind of understanding it. If you notice a horizontal ellipse, the longest side of the ellipse is the sideways or the horizontal side. And so you notice that the vertex here is going to have some A value and Y is zero, let's say. Um, and the vert negative A on the other side. We're assuming that the center is at zero, zero, okay? Um, but basically, that's going to be longer. The distance from the center to that side, okay, that's going to be A units, okay? The longest side is always called the A side, okay? And then the other, um, to the other, let's say, ends, right, on the other axis, so from here to here, the shorter one, this value is gonna be your B value. It's called your minor axis, okay? That's gonna be the length of it or the distance is B, okay? So that kind of matters. You always make the longer one A and you make the shorter one B. Um, so that's a starting point of some of the terms. And again, if you just do these four points and you connect it, you're gonna get this ellipse, which is, you know, like an oval kind of. Um, and so, if it goes top down, if it's longer top down wise, we call it vertical. And again, notice in the other drawing, um, since this is the longer side, we called it the longer length from the center, we call it A. And since this one is the shorter length from the center, we call it B. Again, the longer one is called the major axis. The shorter one is called the minor axis. And again, um, ellipses, just like parabolas, have a focus, but they have two, so we call it foci. And the focus, just like in a parabola or the foci, are inside of the ellipse, which is interesting. Um, and they have a certain distance from the center as well. Um, they label the distance from the center to the foci. They call this length C. Okay. And again, here it would be C as well. And here it would be C as well. Okay. Um, and so I think that pretty much gives you the values. So again, A is the longest distance from the center to one of the ends, right? Um, B is the shorter distance from the center to the ellipse. And C is the distance from the center to the foci. And there's always two of vertices two of the minor vertexes, there's two of the major vertex, and there's two foci, okay? So in this chart, you kind of summarize everything here, and there's a lot on this chart that I really don't think you need to memorize. Like, I wouldn't memorize um, all of this. You know, what I would focus on is, again, know that the A value is the distance from the center to the, um, to the vertices, okay? Uh, the distance from the center to the foci is going to be the C value, right? And the center to the covertices is going to be the B value. So A, C, and B. And if you kind of understand that, you, you can kind of figure out the rest, okay? It's really important to know where the center is. Obviously, these are where the center is zero, zero. Notice it up there. Um, when it comes to the actual equation, you just want to recognize that both x squared and, and y, both x and y are squared. You want to notice it's an addition and it always equals one. Okay, and um, so which one goes? You know, and you notice in the first one, x squared is above a squared, and in the second one on the right, um, the y squared is above the a squared. So that's the only thing that really changed is the placement of the x's and the y's. Well. Notice it depends on what kind of ellipse it is. If it's a horizontal ellipse, it means the major axis is the x axis or a horizontal line. So the x is what's going to go over the a squared. 
okay? Um, if it's a vertical ellipse, you know that the y-axis is the major axis, and so therefore, it's the y squared is going to go over a squared. The major axis, x or y, is what's going to go over the a squared, okay? So that has to go together. So whenever I see the a squared is under the y squared, I know it's vertical. If I see a squared under the x squared, I know it's horizontal. And the a squared in an ellipse is always the largest denominator. So they don't have to tell me it's a squared, but when I see that, you know, uh, it's 64 and the other one is 24, I know that this is the major one and therefore I know it's horizontal because there's an x squared on top of it, okay? So again, we'll do a lot of this and it'll make a lot more sense as we go forward. Um, now, when we're because we know the a and the b value from these denominators, we use this formula to find the c value. And notice an interesting fact is when I'm, my equation is an addition equation, my equation to find c is a subtraction. They're always opposite. You're not going to really appreciate that until we get to hyperbolas, which is another section where you're going to see that the equation has a subtraction in it and the C equation has a plus in it. So it'll help you to kind of differentiate so you don't confuse them, okay? So let's just see what this is. Remember that all the formulas had it equaling one. So basically your X and your Y have to equal, your X squared and your Y squared have to end up equaling one. So what we're gonna do is divide everything here by 64, so that happens. So notice you're gonna get X squared, over 16 plus y squared over 64 equals 1, okay? Now, remember your formula was always over a squared or b squared, and the a squared is always the biggest. So 64 here represents the a squared. That means a equals 8. This 16 is going to represent b squared, which means b equals 4, if that makes sense there, right? And then on top of that, we know, um, because the bigger number is under the y, we know if we draw our, you know, we're going to draw this ellipse, right? We know that it's the y-axis is going to be the major axis for this particular drawing. So if a is 8 and my center is at 0, 0, I know that my vertices here is going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 here, and negative 8 here. And in the other side, I know that it's going to be um, at 4. So B is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 here, and 1, 2, 3, negative 4 here, if that makes sense. And so if I draw now and I connect those dots, I'm going to have my ellipse. This is a you know pretty graph of it, whatever. So there I have my values. So again, A is going to equal 8. B is going to equal 4. Um, and now we have to try to figure out where is our foci going to be located, right? Because I found my vertices. Now again, I probably have to list them, right? So my major vertices, right, is going to be at 0, 8 and 0, negative 8. My minor vertices are going to be at 4, 0 and negative 4, 0, right? And now I just need to find my foci. So I need to figure this out. Remember, my foci is the distance from the center to the c value. Well, how do you figure it out? Well, remember there was that formula on the other page that said c squared equals a squared minus b squared, which is why we always make a the bigger one. So we get a positive number here. So it's going to be c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So 64 minus 16, and it's going to equal, c squared is going to equal 48. Okay, and so I know that C is positive or negative for radical 3. So that means that my C value, remember that's the distance from my origin along my major axis. So it's going to be at, I don't know what 4 radical 3 is, but maybe somewhere around here. Let's just say that that's 
4 radical 3, and then in the other direction, it's negative 4 radical 3. Um, again, that 4 radical 3 is the distance from the center. So my foci will be located at 0, 4 radical 3, and at 0, negative 4 radical 3. And those are my three values. So I've graphed it. I found my vertices, my covertices, and my foci. Okay, so we can call these major vertices or just vertices. And the minor um, is called covertices. So it's probably the right way to do it. Okay, so the minor ones are covertices, the major ones are the actual vertices. And those are the answers that they're wanting. So again, we come over to this problem and we notice that this one's already set up for us, right? Um, it's already in the proper form. It already equals 1. So I know that the larger number here is 9. So I know this is going to be a squared equals 9, which means a equals 3. And I know that b squared equals 5, so b equals the square root of 5. Okay. And because the larger number is under the x squared, I know that this is a horizontal um, ellipse, right? I know that the x-axis is going to be the major axis. So again, here, my center is still 0, 0, right? So I've got 1, 2, 3, so 3, 0, and then 1, 2, 3 in the other direction, so negative 3, 0. Those are my two vertices. My minor vertices then are going to be here, square root of 5, and negative square root of 5 here wherever that is. There's that. And so it's going to look something like that. Okay. So again, I'm going to start with my vertices. I know my vertices goes along the major axis. So again, negative 3, 0 and 3, zero, negative 3, 0 and 3, 0. My co-vertices or my minor vertices are going to be square root. Oh, sorry. It's going to be 0 square root of 5, and 0, negative square root of 5, and my foci. And so I know my foci, again, remember, is going to be c squared equals a squared minus b squared. a squared is 9, b squared is, four, is 5, right? So c squared equals 4, so c equals plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2. So my foci... Remember, it's always on the major axis, so it's going to be 2, 0, and negative 2, 0, there. And so my foci is going to be at negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. And so there's everything I needed. I graphed it, my vertices, my covertices, and my foci. So what happens if the center is not at 0? Well, remember that x is always x minus h. Remember that y, the y part is always the y minus k. So instead of just having x squared up top, you're going to have x minus h squared. Instead of just having y squared up top, you'll have y minus k. And again, it's still the same. The larger side is still the a squared. And again, don't worry about memorizing these formulas. Just learn, understand the graph and the picture. It's a lot easier. So again, we're going to come over here and we're going to look and we see that we have, it's in the proper form, it equals 1. So again, I know the larger one is 16, so I know a squared is 16, which means a must be 4. I know here b squared is 9, which means b is 3, right? So I've got a equals 4, and I've got b equals 3. Um, and I have my vertex which I know is located at hk, so in this case, it's going to be 2 and negative 1. So again, let's kind of think about this. Um, my vertices, or my center rather, not my vertex, my center, sorry. My center is hk. Um, my center is going to be located at 1, 2, negative 1, right here, okay? Um, and so now when I look, I go back to, to the original problem and I see that the larger value, the a squared, is on the y part. So I know that this is my major axis for the, my major axis on this one, right? So again, 
it's going to be the y component. So I know that I'm going to go, if a is 4, then I'm going to go 4 units up. So 1, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to go 4 units up to here. I'm going to go 3, 4 to negative 5. I'm going to go 4 units down to here. So I know that 2, negative 5 is going to be one of my vertices, and I know that 2, 3 is going to be my other one. I know that my minor axis is going to go left and right, so I know that my minor is going to be 3 to the left. So negative 1 here. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 to here, and I'm going to go 3 to the right here. So I know these are my important points. So it's going to be negative 1, negative 1, and it's going to be 5, negative 1, here and here, and I'm going to draw my ellipse. And so let's just kind of write these down. So remember that your vertices are the majors, and so that's going to be 2, 3, and 2, negative 5. And your co-vertices are going to be the minors. So that's going to be negative 1, negative 1, and 5, negative 1. And my foci is going to come next. And so again, I know my foci is always c squared equals a squared minus b squared. In this case, a squared was 16, b squared was 9. So c squared equals 7. So c equals the positive and negative square root of 7. And again, the square root of 7 is somewhere between 2 and 3. So I know it's going to be about somewhere here, maybe. 2, you know, that square, you know, from here to here, my distance is square root of 7. So it's going to be about that far. And I know this one is going to be, you know, maybe here. Now, to be more specific, right? I know that I have an, what's changing is my y value, right? So I know my foci is going to be located at 2. My x isn't going to change, but my y is going to be 3 plus the square root. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My center. My center is at 2, negative 1, right? So my foci is going to be 2, and it's going to be negative 1 plus the square root of 7 and it's going to be located at 2, negative 1, minus the square root of 7. Again, I don't know exactly what these values are. Without a calculator, that would be enough, but that is the location of my foci. I'll be um, adding the uh, c value to it and subtracting the c value to it. And so that's the graph. Okay, so when we get to this problem, it seems a little bit more complex because we notice the 16 on the other side, and that equal 1. So I'm going to have to divide everything on the left by 16. Now the issue is dividing a fraction by 16 is tough, but remember that dividing by 16 is the same as multiplying by 1 16th. So if I think about it in that measure, then this would just be um, multiplying this fraction by 1 16th would give me a denominator here of 64. This one would be y minus 3 squared over 16, and this would equal 1. And so again, now we're able to look and say, okay, this is the larger one. So this is my a squared is 64, which means a is 8. This is my b squared is 16, so b equals 4. And I know then that my major axis is going to be the x-axis, right? So once again, I'm pretty close to being able to sort of come up with the basic graph of this one, right? So um, I know that... Um, my vertex, not my vertex, my center, I have to stop saying that, is located at hk, and so it's going to be negative 3, positive 3. So my center, negative 3, positive 3. Here's my center. Um, really, I shouldn't use c, right, because the c value is the foci, so it's getting very confusing. So that's my center. Um, so anyway, there's my center. I know that it's going to go, um, it's a horizontal graph. So if my A is 8, then I'm going to have to go 8 units to the right for one vertices 
and eight units to the left. So again, if I just do it mathematically, I know my vertices, my current center um, is at negative three, three. So it's gonna be negative three plus eight, three, and it's gonna be negative three mi minus eight negative three minus eight and three. So that's gonna be five three, and it's gonna be negative 11 three. And again, just think about that. I'm gonna go eight units to the right. It's gonna get me to here to five, and I'm gonna go eight units to the left. So minus eight plus eight, right? And it's gonna get me to here, which is negative 11 three. And this is gonna be five three, okay? Um, and then my covertices, my covertices or my minors are going to go up by four. So I'm going to be doing four up this way, and I'm going to do four down that way. So again, when I go to calculate that one, what's changing on those are my y values. So my original vertices has an x value of negative three and a y of positive three. So it's going to be three plus four and then it'll be negative three and three minus four. So my covertices are gonna be negative three and seven, and it's gonna be negative three and negative one. So these are my vertices, these are my covertices. And again, if you start to see them as subtraction problems, it is kind of helpful, or addition and subtraction, because you can't always draw it out, right? So again, I know this is gonna be negative three, seven, and negative three, one. And again, I come over here, and if I just connect the dots, I know that I'm going to have a pretty good ellipse right here. Um, so now what I need to focus on uh, is finding the foci, right? So I know that my foci is going to, again, be, um, I know my c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So 64 minus 16 is 48. So c equals, again, uh, plus or minus 4 radical 3. And so I know that from the center, I'm going to add 4 radical 3 in one direction, and I'm going to subtract uh, 4 radical 3 from the other. So again, I'm going to go um, over here, plus 4 radical 3, and over here, minus 4 radical 3 to get me to where I need to be. So what I'm going to be messing around with here, again, is my x value. So negative three plus four radical three. My y value is gonna stay three. So negative three minus four radical three, and my y value is still three. And again, that's enough for me, because you're not gonna have, um, you can use your calculator if we want you to estimate it. If not, this is perfectly fine. The eccentricity of an ellipse is basically a definition, and it measures the ovalness of an ellipse. And I don't know if we're going to ask you that, but should we? It's created by a ratio E, and it's basically the C value divided by the A value. So if we do ask you, this is the formula for it. And again, um, we'll talk more in detail in class if we're going to expect you to know that. But just know that this ratio applies to ellipses. And so this is where part C is going to end for this lesson. Part D would start on the next slide, slide 10, where you're actually going to be writing the equation of the ellipse. In fact, this is probably the start of the D video, okay? And so what happens if I ask you to find the equation of an ellipse? So again, what I'm giving you is I'm giving you details about it. Um, and now I'm asking you to come up with the original equation that created it. So again, um, let's try to understand what that means, right? So basically my ellipse has a center of zero, zero, and it has a foci of zero positive three and zero negative three. So let's kind of draw that out, right? Zero positive three is located here. And zero negative three is located here. Now I know that the foci is C units away from the center on the major axis. So that means that the C value in this problem is three, okay? Um, the major axis length is eight. Well, I know major axis relates to, to A, so the, that length means from the top of it 
to the other to from the vertices one vertices to the other it equals 8 so i know then that a must equal 4 okay because again it's half of that right because that's from end to end so from the center to the end is just 4 so i know then that a equals 4 um, and I know then that my vertices are 0, 4, and 0, negative 4, right? So now, really what I need to find to come up with my equation is going to be um, the B value. So I know that um, this is on the y-axis, and so I know that the A squared is going to be under the y squared component. So again, it's at the center, so it's going to be, I'm going to have an x squared, I'm going to have a y squared, and it's going to equal 1, right? And I know that the a squared is going to be under the y squared, and the b squared is going to be under the x squared component. So um, I've got here x squared over b squared, e, or no, plus, and I've got y squared over 16 equals 1. And notice all I need to do now is figure out what b squared is. Well, since I have a and c, I should be able to do that. Remember that c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So that's 9 equals 16 minus b squared. So that means that b squared equals 7. And I don't even need to find b because all I need to know is b squared. So my equation is x squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. And so this is the equation of my um, parabola. Now I don't need to graph it, so I, or not my parabola, my ellipse. I don't need to graph it, so I don't need to go and figure out where exactly those fall here. But that's how you do it. So again, if you just understand the parts, you should be able to conclude what you need to conclude. And I do think that drawing it out, a very rough estimate, will help. So again, my center is at 0, 0. My foci is positive and negative 2, 0. So that means my foci is here, and it's here. So again, notice it's along my x-axis, right? So I know my c value is 2, right? Um, the next thing it says, my vertices, so that's on the major axis, is at 3 and negative 3, Zero. So I know that here and here. So that means that my a value has to equal 3 because it's 3 units from the center. So a is 3. And so again, when I go to my equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1, I know that a squared is going to be 9. And I know that the b squared has to be on the other axis. And so yet once again, I'm looking for my b squared. So I know c squared equals a squared minus b squared. 4 equals 9 minus b squared. So I know that that means that b squared has to equal 5. And so my equation is a squared over 9 plus y squared over 5 equals 1. And that's it. It's that simple uh, once you kind of understand what you're doing. So here's, they're giving me different information this time, but again, I should be able to figure out what I need to figure out by that information. They tell me that the vertices are located at 0, positive 5, and 0, negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. So that tells me if my vertices are there, then I know that in the middle of those is my center. So my center is at 0, 0. My a value is the distance from the center to the vertices, which means it's 5. So my a value is 5, which means a squared is 25, right? Um, it tells me that it passes through point 4, 2. So that's kind of weird, right? Um, it passes through 2, 3, 4, 2. Random point right out there. Well, I think I'm going to need that. Um, if my center is 0, 0, I know my formula is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 1. I know that um, if the vertices is 0, 5, then this is um, the y-axis. That's going to be my major axis. So a has to go under the y part. 
and the b squared goes under that. So I've got x squared over b squared equals uh, plus y squared over 25 equals 1. And so I'm like, all right, how do I find b? I don't have c, and I so I can't do the c squared equation. But notice that they did give me a point. So I can plug in, for this x, I can plug in 4. And for this y, I can plug in 2. And I should be able to solve for the only missing variable left, which is going to be the b squared. So I'm going to kind of take it over to here. And I'm going to do, um, instead of x squared, right, I'm going to do 4 squared over b squared plus y squared over a squared equals 1. So let's do the math here. 16 over b squared plus 4 over 25 equals 1. So let me subtract 4 over 25 from 1. I'm going to make 1 25 over 25 minus 4 over 25. So 16 over b squared equals 21 over 25. I can use some cross multiplication here. I can do that, right? I can do 16 times 25 equals 21b squared. 400 equals 21b squared. And I get that b squared equals 400 over 21. Wow, so now it's x squared over, and I'm okay with you doing this. Okay, b squared is 400 over 21, y squared over 25 equals 1. This is acceptable to me. I have no problem with that. It's not the most beautiful form, but it is functional and it's okay. If you wanted to do state change flip, this would change to 21x squared over 400 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. And that would be acceptable as well. Um, again, I'm okay with either one. But that's how you do it. Okay. So let me try to not use so much space here. Um, okay. So again, let's come to this one. We have here our um, vertices is located at 3, 3. Here. And 3, negative 3. So if these are our vertices, then I know that my center is right in the middle of those two here. So I know my center is at 3, 0. Okay? And so again, I know that my y's are going to be the ones with the a underneath it, right? So I know here that a equals 3, right? So a is 3, so a squared equals 9. Um, my major axis, right? Um, I know, now it says here my minor axis length is two. So what that tells me then, if the entire axis is two units, right? Then I know that B is half of that. It's gonna be one. So I know B is one, which means B squared is also one. So it's gonna be like, these would be my minor vertices. This would actually be my ellipse there. But again, they're not asking me to graph it. They're asking me to write the equation for it. So again, I think I have everything I need. My a squared is 9, my b squared is 1, and my center is 3, 0. So my h and my k. So if I come over to here, I know again x minus h squared and my x-axis is going to be, I'm going to put the b squared underneath it, which is 1. Then I've got y minus k. k is 0, so it's just going to be, I don't need the parentheses, it's just going to be y squared. Well, let's just do y minus 0 squared. And my a squared is going to go under that, equals 1. And I could simplify it to... And that's fine. Okay. And that's how we would write that one. And then two more, again, just giving me different information every time. And, uh, you know, you may not have to draw these out, but I personally find it to be the easiest way for me. 
So again here, my foci is located my foci are located at 0, 0 and 0, 4. Okay. So remember that my foci are equidistant from the center. Um, so that means that my center must be right here. So my center is going to be located at 0, 2. And the distance from the center to my foci is my C value. So C must equal 2 here. Okay. So these are important pieces of information. So center is located at 0, 2. And my C value is going to equal 2. So um, that's that. Then I go to my major axis length is 8. So remember, the major axis length is 2 times A, okay? So that means it's, you know, 4 units this way and 4 units this way, and that's going to equal the 8. So I know that A has to be 4 then. So A is going to be half of the 8 or 4, which means A squared is going to be 16, okay? So, um, again, it's not asking me for those ordered pairs, so I don't really need to come up with those. Um, I know that my equation is going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. It's going to equal 1. I know since it's on this y-axis, this is the one that's going to get the a squared. And the b squared is the one that we're not sure of. And so I just need to figure out b. And thankfully, I have a and c, which makes it easy to find b. Remember, it's c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So 4 equals 16 minus b squared. Um, and so b squared equals 12. Um, and I, that's all I need to know. So I've got x squared over 12 plus y minus 2 squared over 16 equals 1. And there's my equation. And lastly, I have one more to, one more to do, just depending on what's given is what I'm going to need to search for. So let's see how I'm going to utilize it. Let's see what I was given here. Again, my foci is at 0, 0 and 0, 8. There's 8. And so I know, again, that my center is in between that. So my center is going to be located at 0, 4. So my center is 0, 4. Um, and that would tell me then that my C value is 4. Okay, so again, important things. Center is located at 0, 4. Um, C is 4 units. It says my major axis length is 16. So that's twice a, which means a is 8. So a squared is 64. I know c squared is 16, right? And I know that b is c squared is a squared minus b squared. So 16 equals 64 minus b squared. And so I get b squared equals 48. So. I know that, again, it's going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 1. It's on the y-axis, so this is the one that gets the a squared, and the b squared is 48. So I can leave it like that, or I can simplify it by cleaning up a little bit that numerator. y minus 4 squared over 64 equals 1. And that's the answer. So again, you take what you're given and you just try to figure out what you're looking at. If you understand what a major axis is, you understand that the A value always associates with the major axis, you understand what the minor axis is, and you understand the B value goes with that, you understand the foci um, is the distance from the center, the center is the midpoint of the two foci, and you understand... Um, that it represents your C value, that distance is the C value, I think, then you can pretty much uh, solve any of these problems that we throw out at you.